Hello everyone, my name is Shauna in case you don't know and welcome back to another video. I'm sorry that the lighting in the background seems a little dark. I had the lighting on my face brighter but my face looked like beet red and I don't know why so it is what it is. Anyways, it is Tuesday and that means that it is book review Tuesday. I don't do these every week but I want to try and do them every week because I like to share my thoughts on books and hi cat, can you, can you move kitty please? She just wanted to be the star of the video, that's why she just walked by. The book I'll be reviewing today is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. This is going to be an honest review of the book, so I'm not going to hold back. As always, this review is a review of the book and not of the author herself. And unlike my other book review Tuesdays, I'm also going to be having some book recommendations based off of this book. No. You can't see it, but my other cat is right here trying to make a scene too. Apparently they just want a lot of attention today. Can you stay down there for the rest of the video? Not interrupt me, please. Thank you, kitty. So to start off with, We Hunt the Flame has a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I tend not to judge books by their cover, but I love this cover so much. That's what the front of it looks like. Even the side is beautiful. Let's see, it has to turn this way. Cat, please. As I was saying, even the side of this is beautiful. And it just has a gorgeous design all around it. And I really love under the jacket covers. Or I think that's what they're called. Maybe they're called a naked cover. I don't know. But it still has that gorgeous spot right there. And there's actually an indent right here. I can't really get it to show up on this video. Ah. Yeah, it's not going to show up in this video, but there's an indent right there, and that's my favorite little thing about hardback books, is what is under the actual jacket sleeve. Like, of course I love the jackets, but what's under them is just beautiful. So I picked this book up for a few different reasons. First of all, I love the cover. Second of all, I heard that it was the Barnes & Noble's Young Adult Book Club book for, like, last month or a couple months ago. Now I don't get involved with those things just because it's challenging for me to leave the house with my chronic illness, but oh this book review is failing already because of my cats. Wow. Okay, but I don't really participate in the Barnes & Noble's book clubs things just because my chronic illness prevents me from leaving the house often so it's challenging to leave the house. And I also saw this on Bookstagram a little bit. And, oh, another thing is, Half of Faisal was literally going to LeakyCon, and I was going to LeakyCon, and I was like, you know, if I finish reading the book by then and I enjoy the book, I'll get her autograph. I didn't finish reading the book by then, so I didn't get her autograph. But yeah. Also, it's only appropriate that I'm wearing a shirt that I got at LeakyCon in 2018, and I'm drinking from this cup, which I got at LeakyCon this past year that she was at. So to start off with, to describe this book a little bit, I went into it not knowing much about it. The tagline or the little thing at the top seemed intriguing to me, which said people lived because she killed, people died because he lived. A little like summary or synopsis of this book, in case you're wondering what it's about, is it's about this girl named Zephira, and Zephira goes into this magical forest and she hunts animals and she brings them back so her people can be fed. And their country is in this sort of like freeze, cold thing and they don't have magic in their country anymore. And now the other main character, his name is Nasir, I hope I'm saying that right, and Nasir is a prince and he is called the Prince of Death. His father is the Sultan or the King, I'm not sure on that. And basically they're both sent to this other land to try and bring magic back to their country. I'm sort of confused if I should call it country or world, I'm not 100% sure so I'm sorry about that. And so Zephyr is sent to go get the magic back and Nasir is sent to kill Zephira. And that's what I'm going to say for right now because it's better that you go into this like not knowing much about it, but if that sort of thing interests you then definitely go read it. I'm going to sort of describe my thoughts on the book first before I go into the star rating that I gave it. So to start off with, I wasn't immediately hooked by this book. There was a lot of new terminology in this book that really confused me. And I thought there should have been like a terminology guide at the end of the book because I have some books where whether it's from a magical world or a community that's not like my community and they know their audience, they oftentimes put a little glossary like guide thing at the back of the book to help you understand the words. This lacked that. I did see on Goodreads that the author did include a terminology guide online, but the thing is I really wanted it in the book. The last thing I want to be doing is reading a physical book and having to have my phone or my laptop open at the same time just to understand what I'm reading. So that was really challenging. Basically throughout the first like two-thirds of the book because it's separated into three parts 
I had no clue what all these terms were and I only got to like understand them a little better towards the end of the book. So I was really confused and it really pulled me out of the story a lot and I was like, I'm having a hard time getting invested in the story when I literally can't figure out what all of these things are. I also found that the first two parts of the story were really really slow and I know that a lot of times the first book in a series is meant to be like introducing characters and you're just starting to get to know the world a little more and I sort of felt that with this book like that's what I felt like the first two parts were especially the first part. A lot of the characters also like drove me insane in the first part specifically Altair and Later on in the story, I think it's in the second part, Benjamin, I hope I'm saying that right, and the girl that I'm drawing a blank on her name were introduced and those characters initially I like hated them, but then by the end of the second part I was like wow I love these characters and they have really developed and shown their like true colors and who they truly are underneath these like masks of what they're supposed to be. A tweet that I saw while I was reading this book was actually from Samantha Shannon who's the author of Prior Priory of the orange tree. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't remember the title that well off the top of my head and bone season because I follow her on Twitter and Instagram and she posted something about how you don't have to and you aren't necessarily supposed to fully understand a fantasy world when you first start off a book and you're supposed to be a little confused a lot of the time because you're just getting introduced to the world and I read that and I sort of felt that way about this book and it sort of helped me like I don't know urge myself to keep reading is that the right word? And so I'm really glad I stuck with it because the last third of the book was spectacular and it was like one of my favorite parts of books ever. The last part was filled with a lot of good like character development and a lot of good action and then the love story sort of like blossoming more. I don't feel bad spoiling that there's a love story because the author herself Hafsa has tweeted before that it is an enemies turns lovers book. But yeah I just love the last third and essentially the first part of it confused me, the second part still confused me and it was a little bit slow but it definitely got better and then the third part I absolutely loved that and because of this I actually gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. The first two parts of me were like meh but towards the end of the second part and the third part I was like I love this world. The love story that happens at the end of this is sort of like those love stories you can totally believe that it's real and you really feel for the characters and you want them to be together more and I love those types of love stories. I actually have a recommendation later in this video for a book with that type of love story that's just so much like you're just rooting for them. I actually think that the love story in this is actually potentially my new OTP because I just love them together so much. I also loved all the plot twists that happen in the last third of this book because it's just plot twist after plot twist after plot twist and I was like oh my gosh I'm an idiot for not realizing that sooner. I don't really have much else to say for this book except for two things and they both revolve around Altair. I really hope I'm saying his name right it totally could be pronounced a different way. But Altair had great character development and I really loved that. I really loved the idea of someone starting off like not on a good hand and being able to change and just change into a new person because that's the fact of the matter not everyone is a good person and a bad person like there's not one way or the other you're a mix of both and I love seeing character development where characters change from bad to good or good to bad or characters that just like have their flaws laid out ahead of time I just love that and then I also really loved Altair's and Nasir's like banter back and forth, specifically Altair because he like banters and jokes around with other characters that aren't just Nasir and I just love that and yeah this is just such a beautiful beautiful book both in its descriptions and how it looks and I really would recommend reading it if you're okay with a little bit of a slower start to a book because I know some people really hate slow starts to books. If you are okay with having your laptop or your phone open at the same time as reading then you should use the terminology guide because I don't like doing that but I really think that I would have gotten more out of this story if I'd used a terminology guide on a piece of technology while I was reading this book. So yeah, four out of five stars as I said. It is a very interesting and amazing book and I love Hafsa. I did start out really slow so I didn't think I would like it at first but it really grew on me. Now since you've heard my thoughts on this book, I actually have some recommendations off this book. As I was reading this book I was sort of inspired to do these recommendations because I found a lot of like similar themes or characters or whatever from this book that reminded me of other books. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend these other books. And these are sort of like, if you like We Hunt the Flame, you like these books, but it can also be vice versa. The first book, which might be a surprise because you might think at first there's nothing in common with these two, 
and that is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone if you're from the US, but this edition is from the UK, so it's Philosopher's Stone this edition. And this is not influenced by the fact that Hafsa was at LeafyCon, which is the Harry Potter convention, that has nothing to do with this. Everyone knows about this book, but to like compare the two, this book has a lot of rich terminology in it that you really get invested in the story by learning that terminology. There's a lot of great character development, and of course there's a lot of really good magic in this, and there's a lot of good magic in We Hunt the Flame also. And something about this is even until you get to the last book, you fully don't know like every spell that's going to be there and what every spell is going to do. And it's sort of similar with We Hunt the Flame, like you don't know everything about the magic and you're slowly like learning about the magic, just like how you're slowly learning spells in the Harry Potter series. So I really felt like this book, even though it's more of a kid's book per se, I hate saying that this is a kid's book because I love it and I think it's perfect for any age, but I know a lot of people classify this as a kid's book and it's definitely a different style of writing than this one, but I would say that if you like the magic and the character development and the terminology of this book, you're gonna like Harry Potter. And I'm only holding out Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone right now because there's so many and I don't want to hold out a stack that's this big right now. I just noticed that all the books that I'll be doing book recommendations based on We Hunt the Flame are series, not standalone books, but that's fine. The next series that I'll be recommending is one that I've talked about on my channel before, which is the Dragori series. It starts with Cloaked in Shadow, then it goes to Found in Night, and then it goes to Poisoned in Light. I'm gonna hold up only this one to start off with because the final book is really thick and chunky and it's hard to hold all three books in one hand. But basically, if you like the villain in We Hunt the Flame, you aren't going to know the villain initially in We Hunt the Flame, and that's fine because you don't necessarily know the villain initially in this book. But if you really like the villain of We Hunt the Flame, and if you like the rich descriptions that are very beautiful and really paints the scenery, then you'll like this book. The other thing too is that there is a character in this book that reminds me a lot of Benjamin, and what is that character's name off the top of my head? Um, let me see. Galleon. Galleon really reminds me of Benjamin. So if you like Benjamin's like influence on the story and who he is, then I think you will really like Cloaked in Shadow. Also, their fate after the first book is the same, I think. Yes. I'm so forgetful right now because I don't remember... There's like two characters that remind me of Benjamin in this book, but one's a male and one's a female, and I know that something happens to one of them, but I can't remember what happens to which one, so yeah. I've tried not to spoil this, okay? But this series is incredible, and I think you will definitely enjoy this series if you enjoyed We Hunt the Flame. Okay, I almost forgot. In case you don't know what this series is about, this series is essentially about a bunch of shapeshifters who get recruited to join this, like, army, and the main character is Zachariah. Zachariah is not a shapeshifter, and they think he is. I don't want to go too much into this because I don't want to spoil it, but just picture like the Shinar Chronicles, the Elves of Shinar Chronicles, and picture beautiful world building like We Hunt the Flame, and also there's a little bit of Avatar The Last Airbender and Elemental Control in it. The next series that I'm about to recommend is similar to the Harry Potter series in the sense that everyone has read it, but just bear with me for a sec. I want to like explain why I'm recommending it based on We Hunt the Flame. So this series is the Hunger Games trilogy. It starts with the Hunger Games, obviously, and then Catching Fire, and then Mockingjay. So the Hunger Games series is obviously a lot different from We Hunt the Flame. It's essentially, most people already know this, but it's essentially about kids who get selected to go into these arenas and they have to kill each other and the world is like separated into districts. But the reason why I'm recommending this book is that there is a lot of striking similarities between the characters in We Hunt the Flame and the characters in The Hunger Games. And the love story in this sort of reminds me of the love story in We Hunt the Flame, but like bear with me because I know it's not exactly the same. The characters that remind me a lot of each other is Zephyra obviously reminds me of Katniss. Zephyra and Katniss are both like empowered, strong women who are sort of like leading a rebellion. Although in We Hunt the Flame it's not really a rebellion per se but more everyone thinks she is a male but she's a female and she's like overcoming obstacles and she sort of like surprised everyone with the fact that she's female 
so it's a little different rebellion and it's not exactly fully rebellion yet we had the flame and a lot of the ways that they sort of like I don't know, don't open up at first per se, reminds me of each other. Zafira initially felt a little bit like she was trying to not become attached to these people and I felt that way about Cadmus in the Hunger Games at first. And then Dean reminds me of Gail, except for their fate is obviously a little different. Dean is like the best friend who would do anything to protect Zafira, so like Gail would do anything to protect Cadmus. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to like spoil who Zafira ends up with. Sorry, my cat almost knocked down my camera. Tail over. Thank you. And then Nasir reminded me of Peta, but bear with me for a second, okay? I would say that Katniss and Peta weren't necessarily like enemies at first. They definitely weren't 100% like all bought in with each other. Specifically, Katniss wasn't all like bought in with Peta at first. And then it developed into like a romance. And that sort of is what happened with Sephira and Nazir. Again, Hafsa literally tweeted that it's an enemy to lover story, so I'm not really spoiling that much. And then, oh my gosh, I'm having memory issues right now. Bear with me for a sec. I got it, okay. Lana or Lena, I'm not sure which one, reminds me a lot of Prim from the Hunger Games series. And then the whole family dynamic with... Zephira, like Zephira's father is dead. Oh, look at that. Katniss' father is dead. Katniss and Zephira remind me of each other. Lena or Lana reminds me of Prim and down to Um. So Um is Zephira's mom and Zephira's mom reminds me a lot of Katniss's mom, I would say. There's just like tension between them and they don't really talk to each other like they should be talking to each other because of like Specifically the father's death. Yeah, I didn't even realize that down to the father's death That's why they don't like talking to each other that much. Wow, my cat's tail is in this right now So that's sort of why I'm recommending the Hunger Games if you like to be hunt the flame Even though most people have already read the Hunger Games and the next series that I will be recommending isn't really Like fantasy or sci-fi per se. It's dystopian, but I don't think there's really anything that isn't possibleness. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't read this series in a while even though it is one of my favorite series of all time. But the series that I'll be recommending is the Article 5 trilogy. So the Article 5 trilogy starts with Article 5. In case you haven't heard, I got this book from a secondhand bookstore. That's why there is no jacket on it. So here, I'll just show you it here. Article 5. Yes, this is a signed copy. I met Kristen Simmons. I love her to death. And then there is Breaking Point. And then it is followed by three. Here, I'll hold the second book because there's actually a jacket on it. The reason that I'm recommending the Article 5 trilogy is not in the sense that it has the same like setting or magic or anything like that. It's honestly just because of the love story. Like the love story doesn't fully become developed in this book because it's like slowly building up to it. But when you get to the part where there's romance, it's sort of like you're rooting for them and you really care for them and you can tell that they can't like resist each other and it's beautiful. That's sort of how I felt about the love story in Article 5. There's like two couples in Article 5, but it's it's the main couple. I do like the second couple, but like, I didn't like Rebecca at first. But she grew on me, she grew on me, okay? Yeah, if you love the love story and we hunt the flame, then you're gonna like the love story in the Article 5 trilogy. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed my review of We Hunt the Flame, and I really hope you enjoyed my recommendations. If you like the recommendations that I did, which is sort of like, if you like this book, then you will like these books, leave a green heart emoji down in the comments below so that I know if I should be doing more videos like this or not. I am planning to do more book review videos in the future. And yeah, I just love reading. I've been reading because I can't leave the house to do activities that I normally enjoy, so reading is just my like go-to and escape right now. So I'm sorry if I just talk about books on my channel. It's just all that I've been doing recently. So yeah, I am going to go, I don't know, maybe read some more of the book that I'm currently reading or maybe go eat some food. I don't know. Also, this is really weird and doesn't connect anything to We on the Flame, but this is the book that I'm reading right now, Puddinhead Wilson uh, by Mark Twain. 
it is nothing like We Hunt the Flame and after reading the beautiful ending to We Hunt the Flame I'm like this book can't even compete with We Hunt the Flame because it's not good in comparison. Remember to like this video and subscribe and follow me on my social media if you like hearing about books. I actually have a bookstagram so an Instagram dedicated to books and I will link all of my social media down in the description below and I hope to see everyone in a future video. Bye! Bye.